secrets of primitive man. In the last 20 years, we have been learning a lot about human ancestors. And over time, more information becomes available. Some theories are changed or supplemented by scientists. The picture of human origins is becoming brighter and more interesting. In this issue, we will talk about all types of our ancestors. And we will try to explain in more detail what this or that anthropoid species was doing in incredibly distant prehistoric times. Approximately 7 million years ago, during the late Miocene, significant events occurred both geologically and biologically that influenced the evolution of the Earth and living organisms. The climate began to gradually cool in the late Miocene, leading to a decrease in tropical forests and an expansion of savannas and steppes. These changes created new conditions for the evolution of animals, including the first ancestors of humans. The appearance of the first hominids, a major event in human evolution approximately 7 million years ago was the appearance of Salanthropus cadensis, one of the earliest known members of the family of hominids, which may be the direct ancestors of humans or its close relatives. The discovery of Salanthropus in Chad suggests that the process of human evolution may have begun in different regions of Africa. This period was key to the further development of life on Earth, including human evolution, and left a significant mark on the fossil record, allowing scientists to reconstruct ancient ecosystems and evolutionary pathways. Salanthropus shedensis is an early hominid species, making it one of the oldest known potential human ancestors. The remains of Salanthropus were discovered in Chad, in Central Africa, in 2001 by a team led by French paleoanthropologist Michel Brunet. The most famous Salanthropus find is a skull nicknamed Tumai, which means hope of life in the local language. This skull is characterized by a small brain volume, comparable to that of modern chimpanzees but has a number of features indicating possible bipedalism, the ability to walk on two legs, and maintaining an upright position of the head when walking. Salanthropus ate a wide variety of foods, including fruits, leaves, roots, seeds, nuts, and possibly small amounts of animal food such as insects or small vertebrates. Walking on two legs is considered a key advantage of this species. Orontogenensis. This species lived about 6 million years ago in what is now Kenya and had a unique combination of features that indicate it was an early hominin. Some features of his femurs and teeth suggest that Orin may have been able to walk on two legs. He was always on the ground, although he retained the ability to climb trees. This bipedality is a key feature that distinguishes hominids from other primates. Oren's teeth resemble those of modern humans, indicating that our ancient friend could have eaten a wide variety of foods, both plant and animal. The name Oren comes from a word in the language of the Tugan tribe living in the region of the Discovery and means elder. Tugenensis indicates the location of the find, the Tugan Valley in Kenya. Artipithecus cadaba is considered a significant species in the study of human evolution. This species lived between 5 and 6 million years ago. This humanoid creature was described in 2001 based on fossils collected in the Middle Awash region of Ethiopia. The discovery of Artipithecus cadaba has had a significant impact on our understanding of early human feeding and bipedalism. The species is believed to have consumed a variety of foods, including fibrous foods. This dietary evidence suggests that Artipithecus cadaba did not feed exclusively on fruits like modern chimpanzees. The question is, 
Did Ardipithecus cadaba walk on two legs and, if so, what was its gait? This remains a matter of scientific research. This discussion is based in part on a single toe bone dated to 5 million years ago and found some distance from other Ardipithecus cadaba specimens, suggesting the possibility of bipedalism. The evolutionary relationships between Ardipithecus and subsequent species such as Australopithecus are also the subject of ongoing research. There may be a series of monkeys in a lineage with progressively smaller teeth, indicating changes in diet and perhaps social behavior over time. Cadaba's paleoecology indicates a habitat of forests, wooded savannas and water springs, challenging previous theories that bipedalism evolved primarily in open grassy environments. This environmental diversity suggests that early hominids such as Kadaba could have adapted to different ecological niches. Ardipithecus ramidus, known as Ardi, provides a fascinating insight into our evolutionary past with a number of interesting features. Ramidus likely had a varied diet including plants, meat, and fruit, as suggested by the average thickness of their tooth enamel. This indicates that they were omnivores, but avoided hard foods such as nuts and tubers. The arty skeletal structure, including part of the pelvis, suggests the ability to have an upright gait, although the exact nature of their bipedal walking remains a matter of debate. The species had a mixture of human and other primitive traits, such as a grasping big toe for climbing trees, but also others, signs indicating potential bipedal locomotion. Ramidus individuals were relatively small, with females standing around 4 feet tall and males only slightly larger, indicating low sexual dimorphism. Their brain size was similar to that of modern female chimpanzees and bonobos, significantly smaller than that of later hominids such as Australopithecus. The species exhibited a unique combination of arboreal and terrestrial bipedal locomotion. Their feet, better suited for walking than chimpanzees, still retained a gripping thumb for climbing. Skeletal features suggest Ramidus could walk upright but also climb efficiently, with a form of locomotion different from any living great ape. Ramidus is key to understanding human evolution, providing insight into the transition from the common ancestor we share with chimpanzees. Australopithecus anamensis is a fossil primate that played an important role in the study of human evolution. The remains of Australopithecus anamensis date back to approximately 4 million years ago, making them among the earliest known members of the genus Australopithecus. The remains were first discovered in 1965 in northern Kenya near Lake Turkana, and were later found in Ethiopia. These regions of Africa have proven to be rich sources of fossils, providing key data on the evolution of the genus Homo. The official description of the species was made in 1995 based on the discovered remains, including fragments of jaws and teeth. Australopithecus anamensis had some features indicating that it could walk on two legs, such as the shape of the leg bones. However, other features, such as the shape of the hand, indicate that they may also have been adapted to life in trees. Studies of the teeth of Australopithecus anamensis indicate that its diet was likely varied, including hard and fibrous plant foods. Australopithecus anamensis is believed to be the ancestor of Australopithecus afarensis, known for the famous Lucy skeleton. Anamensis remains exhibit a unique combination of characters, some more primitive and some more advanced, indicating their transitional position in the ancient human tree. Although no direct evidence of social behavior has been found in Australopithecus anamensis, their social structure was likely similar to that of modern apes, 
given the similarities in structure and behavior. Australopithecus afarensis, the famous Lucy skeleton. The most famous specimen of Australopithecus afarensis, named Lucy, was discovered in 1974 in Ethiopia. Its skeleton was about 40% complete and provided unique information about the structure and mode of life of this species. Australopithecus afarensis lived approximately 3 million years ago. This time range makes it one of the earliest representatives of the genus Australopithecus. Afarensis remains have been found mainly in East Africa, including Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania. Analysis of the Lucy skeleton and other finds showed that Afarensis walked on two legs, but its mode of locomotion was different from that of modern humans. For example, his stride was shorter and his gait less efficient. Litoli feet In Tanzania, in the Litoli area, fossil traces were discovered left by two individuals of Afarensis about 3.5 million years ago. These footprints provide some of the earliest direct evidence of bipedal walking. Afarensis had both human-like and ape-like features. It had a small head and brain, large teeth with thick enamel, and long arms and curved fingers, indicating that it could climb trees. Males were significantly larger than females, which is reminiscent of the social structure of some groups of modern primates. The family from Hadar. In 1975, near the site of Lucy in Hadar, the remains of 13 Afarensis individuals were discovered lying together. This find suggests that Afarensis could live in social groups. The wear on the teeth and their shape indicate that Afarensis had a varied diet, including hard and fibrous plant foods, indicating their ability to adapt to different ecosystems. Afarensis is considered a key species in human evolution, a bridge between earlier forms such as Artipithecus and later members of the genus Homo. Australopithecus africanus was a species of Australopithecus that lived in southern Africa approximately 3 million years ago during the Pliocene period. This species was first discovered in 1924 in Tong, South Africa. The study of the small skull of a child known as the Child of Tong caused much controversy, but ultimately changed the understanding of human evolution. Australopithecus africanus had a small brain comparable in size to that of a modern great ape, but its teeth and jaws were more human-like. This species walked upright, but probably also spent a lot of time in the trees. Analysis of tooth wear indicates that Australopithecus africanus had a varied diet, which likely included fruits, nuts, roots, as well as small animals and insects. Fossils of Australopithecus africanus have been found at several sites in South Africa, including the Sturkfontein, Makapanskat, and other cave complexes. These sites are now part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site called the Cradle of Humankind. Although little is known about the social structure of Australopithecus africanus, some researchers suggest that they may have lived in small groups and had early forms of family ties. There is no convincing evidence that Australopithecus africanus actively made stone tools. However, they could use simple objects such as like sticks and stones for various tasks, such as collecting termites or processing plant foods. Australopithecus africanus occupies an important place in the human evolutionary tree, being one of the earliest members of the genus Australopithecus, which is believed to have given rise to the genus Homo, to which modern humans belong. Paranthropus ethiopicus is a species of the genus Paranthropus that lived approximately two and a half million years ago in what is now East Africa. 
Here are some interesting facts about Paranthropus ethiopicus, which is sometimes called black skull due to the coloration of one of the most famous fossil specimens. Black skull one of the most famous fossils, Paranthropus ethiopicus, found in 1985 on the western shore of Lake Turkana in Kenya, was nicknamed black skull due to its unique dark coloration caused by mineralization. Black Skull revealed that Paranthropus ethiopicus had a relatively small brain, comparable to the brain volume of modern great apes. The skull of this species is characterized by primitive features such as a prominent facial skeleton and massive masticatory muscles. The structure of the teeth and jaws suggests that Paranthropus ethiopicus had adaptations for feeding on solid foods such as roots, tubers, and seeds. This indicates that it could adapt to changing environmental conditions by consuming plant foods that require considerable effort to chew. Based on the anatomy of Paranthropus ethiopicus, it is assumed that it walked primarily on two legs, but could also spend time in trees, indicating a complex lifestyle with a combination of terrestrial and arboreal habits. Paranthropus ethiopicus is considered one of the earliest and most primitive representatives of the genus Paranthropus. It may represent a link linking earlier Australopithecines with later Paranthropus species such as Paranthropus boise and Paranthropus robustus, which are characterized by more specialized traits adapted to feeding on solid foods. Although fossils of Paranthropus ethiopicus are quite rare compared to other hominids, each new find provides important information about the evolution of the genus Paranthropus and the paleoecology of Africa during the Pliocene. Australopithecus garhai is a species of fossil hominid discovered in Ethiopia that lived approximately 2.5 million years ago during the late Pliocene. Australopithecus garhai was first described in 1999 from fossils found near Lake Bashaftu in Ethiopia. The name garhai translated from the Afar language means surprise, which reflects the surprise of the discovery for the researchers. Australopithecus garhai had unique anatomical features, combining both primitive and more advanced features. It had long legs compared to its arms, which may indicate a more efficient biplonger gait than his predecessors. Stone tools and animal fossils with evidence of butchery were found near the Australopithecus garhai discovery site, suggesting possible tool use by these ancient hominids. This is one of the earliest evidence of tool use by members of the genus Australopithecus. Analysis of tooth were suggests that the garhai diet may have included both plant and animal foods, indicating a more varied diet compared to other Australopithecines. Australopithecus garhai plays a key role in understanding human evolution because it may have been the direct ancestor of the genus Homo, to which modern humans belong. Some researchers suggest that garhai could pass into Homo habilis, one of the earliest representatives of our genus. At the moment, fossil remains of Australopithecus garhai are few, which leaves many questions about their lifestyle and evolutionary status unanswered. Future finds may provide more information about this enigmatic species. Paranthropus boise is a species of fossil hominid that existed approximately 2 million years ago in East Africa. Nutcracker Paranthropus boise is sometimes called a nutcracker due to their extremely large back teeth and powerful jaws, which are thought to have been adapted for grinding hard and fibrous foods such as roots and nuts. The first specimen of Paranthropus boise was discovered in 1959 in Oldaway Gorge in Tanzania. Boise had huge chewing muscles attached to ridges on the skull known as the sagittal ridge, which allowed them to chew hard food efficiently. Despite its powerful jaws and teeth, analysis of tooth were revealed that the Boise's diet consisted primarily of soft plant materials such as leaves and fruits, rather than hard foods as previously thought. 
Boise fossils have been found at many sites in East Africa, including Kenya, Ethiopia, and Tanzania, indicating their widespread distribution and adaptation to different environmental conditions. Boise's brain size was relatively small, comparable to other Australopithecines and significantly smaller than those of modern humans. The Boise are thought to have gone extinct about a million years ago, perhaps due to changes in climate and habitat that made their specialized diet less sustainable, or due to competition with more adaptable hominids such as the genus Homo. Little is known about the family structure and social behavior of the Boise, but their prevalence and longevity suggest that they had effective strategies for survival and interaction in groups. At the same time, two million years ago, Paranthropus robustus lived in South Africa. Paranthropus robustus was first described in 1938 by scientists from fossils found in Cromdry Cave in South Africa. Like other members of the genus Paranthropus, Robustus had very strong jaws and large teeth, especially the back ones, suggesting that their diet included large amounts of hard and fibrous foods such as roots and seeds. On the top of the skull of Robustus there was a sagittal ridge, which served as the attachment point for the powerful muscles of mastication. This anatomical feature is characteristic of species with strong chewing. The brain size of Robustus was relatively small, similar to the brain size of other Australopithecines and significantly smaller than that of early members of the genus Homo. Although no direct evidence of tool use has been found for P. Robustus, some researchers have suggested that they may have used simple tools to process plant foods or harvest termites. Robustus likely lived in a variety of environments, including forests and savannas, suggesting a degree of adaptive flexibility. It is speculated that Robustus became extinct due to changes in the environment that made their specialized diet less sustainable, or due to competition with other hominids, especially early members of the genus Homo, which had a more varied diet and more advanced technology. Homo habilis, which means handyman in Latin, is one of the earliest members of the genus Homo and is considered one of our oldest ancestors. Homo habilis was first described in 1964 by Lewis and Mary Leakey based on fossils found in Oldaway Gorge in Tanzania. This discovery significantly changed the understanding of the human evolutionary line providing evidence for the existence of the genus Homo older than previously thought. Homo habilis is often associated with the making and use of the first stone tools, as reflected in its name handy. These primitive tools, known as Oldowan tools, were used for cutting meat and processing plants. Homo habilis had a relatively large brain compared to Australopithecines, this increase in brain size indicates significant cognitive development. Despite the increased brain size, Homo habilis had relatively short arms and long legs, indicating a transition from an arboreal lifestyle to a more upright one. Studies of tooth wear in Homo habilis indicate that its diet was varied and included both plant foods, just like meat. This indicates the possible use of tools for obtaining and processing food. There is considerable scientific controversy as to whether some finds traditionally classified as Homo habilis should be included in the genus Homo. Some researchers have suggested that some of these specimens may be closer to the genus Australopithecus. Little is known about the lifespan and social behavior of Homo habilis, but the size and wear of the teeth suggest that they may have lived longer than their Australopithecine ancestors and may have had more complex social structures. Fossils of Homo habilis are primarily found in East Africa, including Tanzania, Kenya, and Ethiopia, indicating its relatively limited range compared to more recent species of the genus Homo. 
Homo rudolfensis is a species of ancient hominid that lived about 2 million years ago, primarily found in East Africa. Homo rudolfensis was first described in 1972 from a skull found in the area of Lake Rudolph, now Lake Turkana, in Kenya. The species name rudolfensis comes from the name of the lake where this specimen was found. Homo rudolfensis differs from other early species of the genus Homo, such as Homo habilis, by having a flatter face and a broad skull with a larger brain volume. There is considerable scientific controversy as to whether Homo rudolfensis is a separate species or a variety of Homo habilis. Some researchers even suggest that it may represent an early form of Homo erectus, or even a separate lineage not directly related to the genus Homo. Studies of the teeth of Homo rudolfensis indicate that it had both large and small teeth, which may indicate a more varied diet compared to Homo habilis. Fossils attributed to Homo rudolfensis are relatively few compared to other early species of the genus Homo making it one of the least studied ancient human ancestors. Homo erectus, which means upright man in Latin, is one of the key species in the history of human evolution. Homo erectus existed for a very long time, approximately 2 million years. It is one of the longest living species in the genus Homo. Homo erectus was the first of our ancestors to spread beyond Africa, living in various regions of Eurasia, from Southeast Asia to Georgia. Homo erectus is often associated with the so-called Achillean culture, which includes more advanced stone tools than the Olduin ones used by previous species of Homo. Homo erectus may have been the first species to learn to control fire, which significantly influenced its diet, social behavior, and ability to survive in cold environments. Homo erectus had a more upright body type and longer legs compared to earlier ancestors, making it marine effective runner and long distance hiker. The brain size of Homo erectus has also increased compared to previous species. Some archaeological findings, such as well-kept fire pits and communal graves, may indicate the development of more complex social behavior and the possibility of cooperation in Homo erectus groups. Changes in the structure of the teeth and jaws of Homo erectus indicate a more varied diet including more animal foods, which may have been associated with the use of tools and fire. Homo heidelbergensis is an important link in the chain of human evolution, living approximately between 600,000 and 200,000 years ago. This species represents a potential common ancestor of both Neanderthals and modern humans. Homo heidelbergensis was first described in 1907 after the discovery of a lower jaw at Mauer near Heidelberg in Germany. This discovery gave the name to the entire species. The brain of Homo heidelbergensis was significantly larger than that of its predecessors, approaching the brain size of modern humans. Heidelbergensis used more advanced stone tools than previous species. These tools date back to the Mousterian culture, characteristic of Neanderthals, and include spear points and other tools that may have been used to hunt large animals. There is evidence that Homo heidelbergensis engaged in organized hunting, indicating complex social behavior and the ability to plan. This ancestor may have built primitive shelters or used natural shelters such as caves for protection from cold climates, especially in Europe. Fossils of this species have been found in various parts of Europe and Africa, as well as in Western Asia, indicating a wide geographical distribution of these representatives of ancient humans. Homo heidelbergensis had a powerful physique with broad shoulders and strong limbs, 
which allowed it to adapt to difficult survival conditions, including cold climates. Homo heidelbergensis is often considered an intermediate species between Homo erectus and later Homo species such as Neanderthals and possibly early Homo sapiens, highlighting its key role in human evolutionary history. Homo neanderthalensis, or Neanderthal, is one of the most studied and discussed fossil species in human history. Neanderthals lived in Europe and parts of Western Asia from about 400,000 to 40,000 years ago. The first Neanderthal remains were discovered in the Neanderthal Valley in Germany in 1856, giving the species its name. The significance of this find was not fully understood at the time, and it was only later recognized as key to understanding human evolution. Neanderthals would they are adapted to life in cold climates, which is reflected in their stocky build, wide nose and large chest. Their brains were comparable in size to those of modern humans. Neanderthals used complex stone tools that date back to the Mousterian culture. They also used birch tar glue to secure tools and may have even created simple jewelry and symbolic objects. Neanderthals were skilled hunters, preferring large animals such as mammoths and deer. Their diet was primarily meat, but new research suggests that their diet also included plants and even cooked foods. There is evidence of funeral rites among Neanderthals, indicating the presence of some form of cultural tradition and possibly beliefs in the afterlife. Modern humans of non-African ancestry share 1% to 2% Neanderthal DNA, the result of ancient interbreeding between our species. Recent research suggests that Neanderthals could create primitive art and use symbolic objects, indicating a more complex mind than previously thought. Neanderthals went extinct about 40,000 years ago for reasons that are still the subject of debate. Possible drivers of extinction include climate change, competition with Homo sapiens, and genetic assimilation through interbreeding. Homo sapiens, or modern man, is the only surviving species of the genus Homo. We have unique characteristics and achievements that set us apart from other species. Homo sapiens appeared approximately 300,000 years ago in Africa. The earliest known fossils were found in Morocco. The average size of the modern human brain allows us to engage in complex thinking, planning, and creativity. Homo sapiens has developed complex language systems to communicate and transfer knowledge between generations. This contributed to cultural and technological development. Modern man has created a wide range of tools and technologies, ranging from simple stone tools to modern computers and spaceships, greatly expanding his ability to interact with the world around him. Homo sapiens has created a rich art and culture, including painting, music, literature, and religion, which reflects our capacity for abstract thought and self-expression. Although all modern humans belong to the same species, there is significant genetic diversity among different populations, the result of adaptation to different environmental conditions and historical migrations. Homo sapiens is the only hominid species that has colonized almost every corner of the planet, adapting to a wide range of environments from Arctic deserts to tropical forests. The activities of Homo sapiens have had a profound impact on the planet, leading to changes in landscapes, climate and biodiversity, which gave rise to concepts of such eras as the Anthropocene, emphasizing describing the role of humanity in the geological history of the Earth. Homo floriensis, often called the Hobbit because of its small stature, represents one of the most intriguing and unexpected discoveries in the field of paleoanthropology. 
The remains of Homo floresiensis were first discovered in 2003 in Liang Bua Cave on Flores Island in Indonesia. This discovery has generated significant scientific interest and debate. Homo floresiensis is characterized by a particularly small stature, with adults reaching about 3 feet in height, significantly smaller than modern humans. The brain size of Homo floresiensis is comparable to that of chimpanzees, but there is evidence of complex behavior such as tool making. Despite its small brain size, Homo floresiensis made stone tools and may have used them to hunt small stagunat elephants and fight Komodo dragons, suggesting significant cognitive abilities. Fossils of Homo floresiensis date from 100,000 to 50,000 years ago, meaning that the species coexisted with Homo sapiens and other hominid species during the late Pleistocene. There are several theories about the origin of Homo floresiensis, including the hypothesis that it evolved from Homo erectus by undergoing a process of insular dwarfism, which is often seen in animals isolated on islands with limited resources. The reasons for the extinction of Homo floresiensis are not entirely clear, but may include volcanic activity, climate change, competition with Homo sapiens, or a combination of these factors. The existence of Homo floresiensis has prompted a revision of some long-held views of human evolution and has sparked debate about how diverse the genus Homo was and how to classify the various hominid remains that have been found. Homo luzonensis is a relatively recently discovered species of ancient humans that adds new dimensions to the understanding of human evolution. The remains of Homo luzonensis were found in Kalau Cave on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. The official description of the species was published in 2019, making it one of the most recent additions to the genus Homo. The fossils date back to approximately 50,000 to 67,000 years ago, indicating that Homo luzonensis may have coexisted with Homo sapiens and other hominid species. Homo luzonensis has a unique combination of features, including very small teeth and features in the leg and arm bones, that are reminiscent of both older and more modern human species. Some features of the hand and foot are reminiscent of Australopithecines, raising questions about its origins and evolutionary relationships. Like Homo floresiensis, Homo luzonensis may be an example of island dwarfism, a process in which relatively large species shrink in size when they become isolated on an island with limited resources. Luzu Island was separated from other large land masses over millions of years, suggesting that Homo luzonensis may have evolved in isolation and its unique characteristics may be the result of long-term adaptation to the local environment. There is currently no direct evidence of tool use by Homo luzonensis, leaving open the question of what technologies and behavioral practices this species might have had. The discovery of Homo luzonensis has stimulated debate about the complexity and diversity of ancient human species, and how exactly the various finds should be classified within the genus Homo. Homonality is one of the most mysterious and exciting discoveries in paleoanthropology in recent years. Homonality was first described in 2015 after the discovery of its remains in the Rising Star Cave system in South Africa. The expedition, led by Professor Lee Berger, brought the discovery to the world's attention. Research has dated the remains of Homonality to approximately 335,000 to 236,000 years ago meaning they may have coexisted with the first Homo sapiens. Homonality exhibits a remarkable combination of features similar to both early hominids and later Homo species. It had a small brain, similar in size to that of a chimpanzee, but its structure of teeth, legs and arms, and some aspects of its skull were similar to modern humans. One of the most intriguing mysteries surrounding homonality is its potential burial practices. The remains were found in a deep and inaccessible part of the cave, 
leading to speculation that the bodies may have been deliberately placed in the cave. This raises questions about the behavioral complexity of Homonality. Despite its small brain, Homonality had a relatively slender build with a height of about 5 feet and a weight of almost 100 pounds. Its arms and legs indicate the ability to move efficiently on both legs and possibly climb trees. Homonality's brain was relatively small, challenging the traditional link between brain size and cognitive ability. More than 1,500 fragments belonging to at least 15 individuals of varying ages and sexes were found in Rising Star Cave, providing a unique opportunity to study the population of this species. Homonality resurrects questions about how exactly human evolution proceeded and supports the idea that the ancient world was inhabited by multiple Homo species whose existences overlapped in time. This list of human species is not exhaustive and may change with new discoveries and research. Thank you for watching our episode. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And also click on the bell so you don't miss new and interesting videos from the Real Unreal channel.